Shane. One of the most popular yet troubled characters in all of Stardew Valley. Shane needs little or no introduction to the Stardew Valley community, but to those who clicked on the video just for the cooking part, Shane is a recovering alcoholic who works at the local Joja Mart and lives with his dear Aunt Marnie, who very graciously rents out a room for him while he attempts to put his life back together. Peace by booze-soaked, angst-ridden peace. In today's video, you and I will be cooking up a favorite of this miserable, disheveled mess of a man. Those brave enough to romance such a complex and unkempt specimen learned that upon reaching three hearts with Shane, their beloved will send a recipe to them in the mail for pepper poppers. Much like the inner machinations of Shane's mind, the recipe is rather simple. All you'll need is a kitchen, one hot pepper, and one cheese. The game describes pepper poppers as spicy breaded peppers filled with cheese. Just one of them will fill you with 130 energy and 58 health, and also provides a buff of plus two farming and one speed. This means the crops you pick will be of higher quality, and of course, you will move faster. Shane makes yet another appearance as the featured townsperson on the recipe page, of which the other side contains an image of what we are shooting for today. Those pepper poppers look legitimately delicious, and I sincerely hope that we can get something that's even remotely close to this. One of the major setbacks of the official Stardew Valley cookbook is that none of the recipes tell you expected cook time. So I'll just make a point now to tell you that this took me about two hours to make from start to finish, but an experienced cook could do this much faster. Shane's pepper poppers require five large green jalapenos, five large red jalapenos, six ounces of cream cheese at room temperature, two tablespoons of mayonnaise, four ounces of shredded pepper jack cheese, four finely chopped pickled jalapeno slices, one scallion, the white and green parts thinly sliced, one finely grated garlic clove, a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika, one tablespoon extra virgin olive oil, kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper, one tablespoon of melted, unsalted butter, and one cup of cornflakes. First things first, we need to half these jalapenos the long way and remove the seeds and the membranes. While the recipe called for red jalapenos, we will instead be using the Fresno pepper, which is known for its hotter, smokier, and fruitier taste. This is because I simply could not find red jalapenos at any of the supermarkets I went to. Don't really know why. But if gutting the inside of all of these jalapenos has any lesson to teach, it's that no matter what garden we're from or what color we are on the outside, we're all pretty similar on the inside. Now would be a great time to preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. You will now place the jalapenos on a large baking sheet. I decided to place down parchment paper first because things are about to get messy. Take your tablespoon of olive oil and brush them peppers all over like your Bob Ross in his heyday. Once you're done, season the peppers lightly with the salt. A little bit really goes a long way here. Take the peppers and roast them in the oven until they are just about to become tender. About five minutes. Give the peppers a little time to cool just slightly and reduce the oven temperature to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll be using it again later. Next, we're gonna thinly slice this scallion by cutting off the tip first and just gliding our knife blade from bottom to top without exerting any real pressure on the blade. This will give us those nice, thin, long green and white parts that are going to go in the filling. Next, it's time to chop our garlic clove. To stay true to the nature of Stardew Valley and preserve the integrity of buying organic and local where I can, I decided to take it upon myself to chop up my own garlic clove instead of buying it pre-chopped in a jar. That was until I realized I had no idea how to chop a garlic clove. After taking to Google, I learned I should have just crushed the clove with the flat side of my knife and pressed down really hard. This did in fact turn out to be a lot more effective than trying to peel the clove by hand. And to your local video game live streamer turned cooking YouTuber, this was simply like magic to me. Up next, we have our four pickled jalapeno slices that need to be finely chopped. So let's do that. Next, the extra fun part making the filling to go inside of the peppers. Inside of a medium bowl, you will combine the cream cheese, mayonnaise, cheese, pickled jalapenos, scallion, garlic, and that smoked paprika. 
Next, you'll stir everything together until it's all combined. It was at this point in the cooking process that I realized why the recipe called for cream cheese at room temperature. My arm became very tired mixing all of this filling together, and letting the cream cheese reach room temperature made it a lot softer to mix, so it became much less tiring as a result, and all of the ingredients for the filling blended together much more nicely. This would be a great time to taste the filling and season with salt if needed. Now it's time for us to break out that one cup of cornflakes. Into a small bowl, you will coarsely crumble the cornflakes using your fingers. I found that this can make a bit of a mess, so do be prepared for that. But no matter how your cooking surface ends up, it couldn't look worse than after Shane moves in with you. Now take your tablespoon of unsalted butter and make sure that's melted all nice and good. Take your melted butter and add it in to the crumbled cornflakes. Be sure to add a good pinch of salt and a bit of black pepper into the mix too. All in all, this part of the recipe was probably my favorite. It reminded me of how fun it was to make food art at school when I was little. All right, we are officially in the home stretch of this recipe. Take your tender roasted jalapenos and fill them about halfway with the cream cheese filling you just mixed together. It should take about one tablespoon of filling for each pepper, but depending on the size and shape, there could be a lot of variance. To be sure that none of the filling oozes out, don't overstuff any of them with the filling, and use the back of a small spoon to flatten the filling and remove any excess that goes up higher than the edge of the jalapenos. And now, last but certainly not least, sprinkle the tops of the filled jalapenos with your crumbled buttered cornflakes. Take your filled jalapenos, place them in the oven, and bake until they are tender, the filling is hot and melty, and the cornflake topping is very crispy, about 15 minutes time. Let them cool for 5 minutes after taking them out, then transfer to a plate and serve them immediately. Not gonna lie, I didn't really script this part of the video, so here's some up-close footage of the peppers. Okay, we're pushing them away. Ah, yes, the famous plate. So I got a few comments on multiple platforms asking the origins of the plate with all the flowers and the little bridge over the river there. It turns out it's part of a set. I'll put the link in the description for where you can find it. Um, I guess it was from my grandma's house before uh, she passed away, but dang, look at all of these amazing pepper poppers. They turned out so good visually, but we need to know how they taste. So let's do that, huh? Well, don't drop it now. And down the hatch. It was uh, very delicious, if I do say so myself. And sorry for the blurry camera. My dad was operating it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and leaving a like if you enjoyed the video, and comment down below which recipe you want to see next. Until next time, happy farming. Oh, and don't forget to follow on Twitch. I'm live over there all the time, and I'd love to meet you guys. Okay, bye.